All right, welcome everybody. We are here going to review the, we got a packed house, and we're going to review important presidential elections in American history. So we're going to start with the election of, well, we don't have to do George Washington, right? We all know that. Unani <laughs> George Washington, unanimous. So let's start with 1800. 1800 election is between Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. 1800. It's between Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. Thomas Jefferson was a Democratic Republican. John Adams was a Federalist. John Adams was the president at the time. And what was Thomas Jefferson? His vice. vice president. He was his vice president. Ooh, is right. Now they're running against each other because, remember, Jack, early on, whoever won became president, but who, who became the vice president? Whoever came in second place. So you could have different political parties. So in this election, Jefferson wins. Jefferson wins. He becomes president number three. It's referred to as the Revolution of 1800 because there was a transfer of power. They went from Federalists to Democratic Republicans, but there wasn't too much, too much turmoil. I don't want to get too deeply involved in this, but this is the election. Do you remember the Aaron Burr saga? Yeah. This is when Burr actually tied Jefferson and they had to go to the House of Representatives to pick the winner. And who changed? Very good. Hamilton convinced somebody. Very nice, Brendan. Somebody. Hamilton convinced, I don't know his name. He convinced somebody from, I think, Maryland to change their vote, change his vote. And as a result of that, Burr got very angry. And it's one of the reasons that Burr did what? Shot, Shot and killed Hamilton. Yeah, Liz, question. Yes. It's the first time, yeah, exactly. First time where the political party changes, and it wasn't like a, I keep being careful here, because there were problems, um, but it was a relatively smooth transfer of power. I would say the only real struggle was that Adams made these last-minute appointments to uh, judge positions, and that upset Jefferson, and that led to the most important Supreme Court case ever, Marbury versus Madison, which established judicial review. Okay? Pat? Were they like a Federalist? Maybe, uh, they believe like they could change the Constitution? So, Federalists, very good. Federalists were like Hamilton. They believed in a loose interpretation. Democratic Republicans were like Jefferson, who believed in a strict interpretation. Wasn't Jefferson originally Jefferson was, no. Jefferson, and then he changed his mind with the Louisiana Purchase. And Jack... If you really want me to blow your mind here, when I interviewed the president from Gilda Lerman Center, he, he said that Jefferson was actually the first Hamiltonian president. And when he said that, after the chills stopped up and down my arms, I got to ponder it for a second. And that, But we got no time for that right now. We got no time for that. Does anybody have a question on 1800? Annie. Uh, Federalists. So Democratic Republicans or Jefferson Federalists are um, John Adams. Okay. Now we're going to go to the next significant election, and that's going to be 1824. So we're going to go to 1824. That was 1800. The guy who switched was Bayard of Delaware. Oh, you looked it up? Yeah. Okay. His last name was... Ba oh, I think I, I think I knew uh, that. Okay. Do you know his first name? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba last name was Bayard, and he was from no. Delaware. Okay, thank you. All right. In 1824, guys, we have four candidates running for president, and all four of them are from the same political party. One of their names is John Quincy Adams. And for those of you watching, I, I have no angle to write, so my handwriting is particularly bad. Uh, the next one is Henry Clay. And then the third one is Andrew Jackson. And then the fourth one, only Tom Sullivan from last year remembers this, is William Crawford. 
Yes, I have to give Tom a shout out because he's my 1824 presidential election expert. All four, William Crawford, all four are Democratic Republicans. And there's a reason for that. Because we are on the heels of what time period? Era of good feelings when there was only what? One political party. Good. So when we finish counting the Electoral College votes, Andrew Jackson had 99. What happened to my pen? Ah, uh, it froze. Okay. Andrew Jackson, 99. John Quincy Adams, 84. William Crawford, 41. Henry Clay, 37. All right? So you would think that Jackson was the winner, correct, Victor? Because the most votes should be the winner. But it's not, because you have to win a majority. So as a result of that, the House of Representatives picks the president. Very good, Grace, from the top three candidates. So who do I have to cross out? Henry Clay. Henry Clay. It's all right. Well, it's not all right, but <laughs> Henry Clay gets crossed out. So, because he came in fourth. So the top three candidates get the president. The House of Representatives. So Yes, Matt. Excellent, Matt. He had a stroke. Yeah. William Crawford had a stroke, so we're probably not... Oh, this is terrible. We're probably not going to vote for him. So we're down to between John Quincy Adams and Andrew Jackson. Who was the Speaker of the House? John. Jackson. Jackson. Who was the Speaker of the House? John. Henry Clay. Henry Clay was the Speaker of the House. Do you think he had some influence? Yes. yes. He made a secret deal, allegedly with John Quincy Adams. And he said, very good. If you select me as your Secretary of State, I'll help you get elected president. Obviously, it's got to go the other way. And they call this the corrupt bargain. And the corrupt bargain infuriates Andrew Jackson. What does this lead to the end of? Era of good feelings. And now you're going to see a time period where... There's back to two parties, and eventually it'll be Jackson and the Democrats, and Clay will form a new party called the Whigs. Is everybody clear on this election? These are good as like essay points. You know, you're beginning an essay, you're ending an essay. There's like a breaking point. That's why this would be good for you to know. Does anybody have any questions on this? You sure? All right. Next. Well, this is terrible. Um, it, the computer, not my lesson. The, uh, <laughs> the next election is 1860. And in 1860, just can't get the pen to write. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. In 1860, we, ha we are on the verge of what, everybody? Civil, Civil War. War. Please don't stress about this, but you have Abraham Lincoln, who's the Republican president. The previous president? Uh, no, Republican. Abraham Lincoln is the Republican. No, he was not the incumbent. The incumbent was James Buchanan, who was so bad that he doesn't even he doesn't even run in 1860. The Democrats split theirs. You have Stephen Douglas, and you have John C. Breckinridge. P. H. Yeah. And when I was at the Gilder Lerman Institute, there was a whole big bookshelf, and there was a book about John C. Breckinridge. I couldn't believe it. Like, I didn't even realize there'd be a book about this guy. And then the last guy was John Bell. Under no circumstances do you need to know any of those names other than Lincoln. But why am I teaching you this election? Because Lincoln won, and how many votes in the Electoral College did he get from a southern state? Zero. 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 And he wins the election. And what happens one month after he's elected? South Carolina, South Carolina. South Carolina seceded. South Carolina. This is really not working. South Carolina seceded. Question, Annie. You sure? Okay, Brendan, question? No, I'm saying South Carolina. Okay, and that leads to the Civil War. Is everybody clear on that? All right, next election. Liz, this is the one you wanted me to go over, 1876. So this is during Reconstruction. And your candidates are Rutherford B. Hayes, 
and Samuel J. Tilden. Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel J. Tilden. Tilden was the Democrat. Hayes was the Republican. Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel J. Tilden. When the election votes were counted, Tilden had 184. Hayes had 165. Jack, were the votes all counted? No. They were missing how many? 20. There were 20 votes that were disputed. 20 votes that we're just not sure who won. So they set up a special commission. And that special commission gave all 20 to who? Hayes. So how many did Hayes win by? He won by one vote. Do you think it sounds fair? No. So the Democrats said, well, we could challenge this. But instead they made a deal, Liz. And the deal was this. We, the Democrats, will allow you to keep the presidency. You can have Hayes. But you Republicans, radical, have to end what? Reconstruction and the five military districts. Perfect. Do you understand that? Liz? Any questions? So was it a federal decision? No. It was a deal that was made so it's I, I, now I understand your question. It wasn't like um, like a law. It was a deal that was made between the two political parties. But if you're asking, did they have to remove the troops as a federal decision? Yes, they did, because that was a federal plan. Got it? Okay. All right. Thank you for your patience. But I really want to finish these. We got like two or three more. Next, we're going to go to 1912. 1912. What an election. Wow. We're in the middle of what time period? 1912. Progressive, progressive era. era. And who's the first progressive president from my hometown? Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt. Oyster Bay. Oyster Bay. Thank you. Did he, did he run for a third term right away? No. Nope. No. So he, gave, he said, I'm out. And who became the next president after him? Taft, good. So <laughs> William Howard Taft was the president. But Roosevelt was a little disappointed with him. So in 1912, he says, I'm going to come back and run. But he didn't get the nomination, so he ran as a third party. Very good. The Bull Moose Party. Excellent. That's Teddy Roosevelt. Now your Democratic candidate was from New Jersey, governor, former president of Princeton, and uh, definitely a name everybody knows. Correct, Victor. Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. Very good. And then the fourth candidate, uh, a socialist. Eugene V. Debs. What does it say about me that more of you know Debs than Woodrow Wilson? Not a good sign. Jack, maybe you're right. So... In this election, Woodrow Wilson won in a landslide. 435, the Electoral College votes. Roosevelt, 88. Taft, 8. Debs, 900,000 people. But it's not really that much of a landslide. Because what did Roosevelt and Taft do to each other? As Republicans. They shared the vote. Good, Annie. If you only ran one Republican, there's a good chance that he would have won instead of Wilson. But he didn't, and Wilson's a president. Is everybody clear on that? Wilson was a Democrat. Wilson w Taft was actually the Republican. Taft was actually the Republican. Okay? Wilson. Wilson wins. Okay? Got it? Okay. Um, Liz, in 1912, Taft is still president. When does Wilson become president? 1913, because you don't become president until the following year. So if you look up who was president in 1912, it's definitely Wilson. Okay? Next election, 1948. Uh, 
Well, let's just make sure we know this. 1928 is when Hoover won, and then what happened right after Hoover? Stock market crash, depression. 1932, the first of four times who won? FDR. So he's elected 1932, 36, 40, and 44. 1948 was a really interesting election because Truman defeated Thomas Dewey, but what did the Chicago Tribune say? Dewey defeated Truman. Okay? 1948. 1960, our first Catholic president was elected, and who was that? JFK. And who did he defeat? Richard Nixon. Because he was gross on TV, and he cheated. Um, and then 1964, a lot of you guys like this election because of the Daisy ad. You remember the girl with the Daisy? So that's when LBJ defeated, ah, make me proud, Barry Goldwater. Nice. Jack, you see how I balance that? I used Eugene V. Debs to defend me as his communist, but then I said, you make me proud by knowing Goldwater, you'll never know what I am. You'll never know, because he's... 1968. 1968 was the crazy Chicago Democratic Convention, and in 1968, that's when Pegasus was nominated by the hippies, but that's when was LBJ and Goldwater? 64. And then in 68, that's the craziness of the Democrats protesting, and it led to Nixon being elected president. And then the only other one that I think would be good to know is 1980. That's the Reagan conservative movement. And for those of you that didn't hear about this, they were going to make a movie about, Donald Ra uh, about Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Freudian slip, Freudian slip. Um, Ronald Reagan, and it was going to be a comedy, and Will Ferrell was going to play Reagan, but they were going to make a joke about him having Alzheimer's, which I personally don't think is funny, and Will Ferrell bailed out of the uh, job. So, all right, those of you that are watching this at home, I hope that this helped, and the rest...